In today's video, I'm going to share with you six local SEO tips worth their weight in gold, as they are mainly used by SEO pros and very rarely shared outside of the local SEO community. So if you want to grow your business, you'll want to watch them all. Let's start with the first one. Many businesses are located in areas where you can find great cultural diversity and where many different languages are spoken. Here is a typical example of a law firm with several offices dotted around Southern California where you can find strong Spanish-speaking communities. By translating its website into Spanish, this law firm is able to rank very well organically for tons of relevant keywords in Spanish, which is a smart move. But what they haven't done is take advantage of their bilingual ability on their Google business listings. Although you can't add another language to your listing, you can translate the business name. In this instance, the business name of this profile could be translated to de Dominguez Firm, Avocados de Lesiones Personales. Thank you. I couldn't have said it better myself. This may seem like a small detail, but since the business name of your listing is the second most important ranking factor on Google Maps according to the annual local ranking factor survey, being able to translate it should help this business rank higher. How? In this particular example, this listing's business name includes some very important keywords personal injury lawyers. Adding the Spanish translation to the business name will help this listing climb up the ranks on Google Maps when someone is searching for Avocados de lesiones personales. Thanks again. To add a translation to your business name, go to Google Maps and search for your listing. Click on the hamburger menu next to your name. At the bottom of the menu, select the languages option. Pick the language in which you want to add the translation in. From your listing, click on the Suggest an Edit button, which should now be translated. From the pop-up window, select the first option. This will open your listing details. The top field is your business name in the original language. The field below is where you can add your translation in your selected language. Once you're done, save your changes and don't forget to switch your language back on Google Maps. Let's move on to a completely different topic. Adding a link to a page on your website that points to another page on your website is called internal linking. Here is a typical example of what an internal link looks like on a random website. I'm sure you're all familiar with this concept and have included internal links across many of your pages. If you haven't, here are three reasons why you must do it. They help visitors navigate through your site. They help search engines understand the structure of your site. And they help distribute authority across the pages of your site. While the first two points are easy to understand, let's linger on the third one if you're not sure what it means. Internal links help distribute authority across the pages of your site. Not all websites are made equal. When you conduct a search on Google, more often than not, the top results are the ones deemed to be with the most authority. Although website authority is based on many factors, one of the key components that define the authority of a website is the number of other websites linking to it, also called external links or backlinks. Essentially, the more external links a site receives, the more authoritative it is being considered. It's like a vote of confidence. Look at the number of external links pointing to the top three results when I search for SEO for beginners. The only problem with external links is that most of the time they are not distributed evenly across all the pages of your site. Instead, they mostly point to the homepage. The result? You end up with a very authoritative homepage that will rank well in Google, while other pages will be a lot weaker and not perform as well in Google. This is when internal links come in. Adding internal links from your most authoritative pages to your weaker pages will help pass down some of that authority to them. It will show Google these pages of your site are important and will boost their performance in search engine results. So, how do you do that? Hopefully you've installed Google Search Console on your website. If not, make sure you set it up as it's such an invaluable tool and completely free. Once you've logged into Search Console, from the left-hand side menu, scroll down until you get to the Links option. Just click on it. This will display a list of the pages on your site that have the most external links pointing to them, which unsurprisingly, in this case, is the homepage. 
but there is also a breakdown of the top pages with the most internal links. Find out the ones that have the fewest links or the ones you want to rank for and make sure you add internal links to them from the pages that have the most external links. This should make a significant difference to your rankings. Time to have a look at our next nugget. Even if you are super creative, it's very difficult nowadays to publish content on your site that can't be found anywhere else and will rank on Google. Everything has been written about in one form or another. So instead of reinventing the wheel and trying to come up with original ideas, you are better off trying to outrank your competitors by producing content that offers better value than they do. This is how. Let's say you are a realtor and want to publish an article on your blog to target the keyword best name neighborhood in Austin because it has a decent amount of searches every month and could potentially lend you some leads. Head over to the Google Chrome store and search for an extension called SEO Minion. Then install it on your browser. Make sure you pin it to your toolbar so you can easily access it. Once you've installed SEO Minion, head over to Google and search for your targeted keyword, which in this case is best neighborhood in Austin. Click on the first result, then click on the SEO Minion icon from your toolbar. This will bring up a side panel giving you access to the full SEO analysis of this particular page. There is a ton of useful information in there, but the one option you want to focus on is the one called Analyze on-page SEO. This will break down all the SEO components of this particular page. The one we are interested in is called Headings. The headings section highlights all the topics being addressed on this page. Click on the download link and open the file in a spreadsheet. You'll see the page structure in detail. Repeat this process with the top 5 to 10 results and bring everything on the same sheet. Remove duplicates, similar topics or irrelevant information across all the results. You will be left with a unique structure for a page that includes more topics related to your target keywords than any of the pages ranked in the top search results combined. You can either write the content for it yourself or get it done by a professional copywriter. This will result in a page that provides outstanding content value. Google will love it and will reward you with some good rankings. Before moving on to the next step, if you like this video so far, please remember to hit the like button as it helps my channel grow and allows me to continue making more videos so I can help you out further. Thanks a lot. I know what you're thinking, what the heck? does PAA mean? PAA stands for People Also Ask. This is a feature you can find in Google search results that help answer commonly search questions related to a given keyword. Since these questions are directly correlated with a specific keyword, you can turn them into very valuable pieces of content which you can use to your advantage. This is how. Let's say you're a dentist and you're trying to create a page about your dental implant service or enhance an existing one. Simply go to Google and search for dental implant. You'll be able to see what popular questions people ask in relation to this specific keyword and integrate some of them into your page. Obviously, you'll need to make sure you write your own content. You can expand the list to further levels by clicking on the last question, which will give you tons of additional content ideas. Extracting these questions manually, however, would be a tedious exercise. Instead, you can do this in just one click. If you've installed SEO Minion, you should see a box on the right hand side of Google search results. Click on the second drop down and scroll all the way down. You should see a list of items called PAA level 2 all the way to level 8. Choose the level you want to extract data from. I think 5 is more than enough, otherwise it takes too long. Then click on go. After a couple of minutes or less, you'll have access to a file that contains all the people also ask questions and answers related to your keyword. They will also be neatly organized based on topics. You can use these to either create entire pages on specific topics, add to existing pages to beef up the content, or include them in the killer SEO pages we covered in a previous tip. Don't just copy and paste questions and answers, make sure you write your own.
Before engaging with the business, searchers will very often check their Google review profile first. Although in many cases, some of the existing reviews are available directly from the Google business panel, users will more often than not click on the review link to investigate your reputation further. By default, Google will display what they feel are the most relevant reviews, which may not always show your business in the best light. To make sure your reviews paint a glowing picture of your business, you can influence some of them to be displayed at the top of your review list. How? By encouraging your customers to include photos when they review your business. Reviews with photos tend to stay at the top of the review list and will stick there for longer than reviews without photos. Check out the example of this microblading salon based in New York. Their top three reviews all include photos, even though they are older than many of the other reviews, which I'm sure are equally relevant. Although these reviews won't stay at the top forever and will eventually drop back down, they will help you control to an extent what prospective customers see first. The other benefit is that these photos will also be automatically added to your listing. This is great because according to Google, businesses that add photos to their business profiles receive 42% more requests for directions on Google Maps and 35% more clicks through to their websites than businesses that don't, making this tip a really powerful one. Time to move on to our last tip. Getting your Google listing to show in the map pack results for as many keywords as possible is probably the main aim for any local business owner. The question is, which keywords should you be going after beyond the ones you are already ranking for to extend your reach and grab a bigger slice of the local demand? The answer is simple. Spy on your competitors to see what keywords they rank for in the map pack and you don't. This is how. For this tip, I will be using a tool called Ahrefs. Although I always try to provide tips using free tools as often as possible, Ahrefs is unfortunately not one of them. If you're serious about growing your business or becoming an SEO professional, I thoroughly recommend you invest in something like Ahrefs as it provides invaluable data and information you can use to improve your online visibility. You can find the link to Ahrefs in the description below. Just so you know, I am not affiliated affiliated with them, nor that I have been paid to mention their name in this video. It's simply been one of my go-to SEO tools for years. For this tip, I'm going to pretend I am this plumber called Moon Valley Plumbing based in Phoenix. These three plumbing companies also based in Phoenix are my direct competitors and I want to know which keywords their Google listing rank for in the map pack that my listing doesn't. Here is how it's done. Log into Ahrefs. In the main field, enter your website address. In this case, I'll be using moonvalleyplumbing.com. Then click on search. From the left-hand side menu, click on the option called Content Gap. List each of your competitors' websites links in the empty fields. You can add up to 10. Once you're done, click on Show Keywords. This will list all the keywords these plumbers' websites are ranking for in organic search results, which Moon Valley Plumbing doesn't. In itself, this is really interesting, but right now I only want to see which of these keywords my competitors rank in the map pack for. To do this, download the keyword list by clicking on the export option. Once the list is downloaded, open the file and clean up the data so you're left with a raw list of keywords. Save the file as a TXT file somewhere on your computer. Next step, go back to Ahrefs and select the Keyword Explorer option. Import your keyword list and make sure your default country is selected. Then click on search. Click on the SARP feature drop down option and select the local pack option, then click on apply. Finally, click on show results. This is the list of all the keywords your competitors are ranking for in the Google Map Pack and you don't. You can refine the list further by excluding your competitors' brand names as there would be no point trying to rank for them. You should now have a clean list of keywords you can target, which includes information such as how difficult it is to rank for them and the estimated monthly search volume. Right off the bat, I can see some really easy ones Moon Valley Plumbing could rank for. This was the very last nugget I had to share with you. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like the video and until next time, happy marketing.